What's up everybody, Boone here from premiumbeat.com. Today I'm gonna to show you how to read and understand all of the video scopes in the Lumetri Scopes panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get started. Video scopes provide a more detailed look at a video image and editors use them to help abide by broadcast standards and keep their images legal. You can also perform more precise color correction with these scopes. So knowing how to read the video scopes is gonna give you tighter control over your images. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna go over how to read all of the scopes in the Lumetri Scopes panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. This includes the vector scope, the parade, the histogram, and the waveform monitor. I'll also discuss how to customize the Lumetri Scopes display panel. So before we get started, we need to make sure we have the Lumetri Scopes panel open by selecting Window, Lumetri Scopes. You can also select Premiere's default color workspace. So now that we have the Lumetri Scopes panel open, we want to open up the Vector Scope. So this, to open the Vector Scope, go down to the wrench bar, select Presets, and then select Vector Scope YUV. So the Vector Scope measures color information. We can view saturation and hue information. The saturation is measured from the center outward, and the hue is measured in a circular direction. You can see here, it's giving us some readouts here. We can see red, magenta, blue, cyan green, and yellow. And a good way to look at the information in a vector scope is to look at color bars. This is what some video engineers use when they're making sure that everything's properly calibrated. And what they want to do is they want to get this these dots in the specific information. So we have red, blue, yellow, cyan, magenta, green. And as long as these are in these boxes, that means they're not overly saturated and they're the perfect hue. And so let me show you exactly what's going on here. I have the Lumetri color panel open here, and I'm going to go ahead and lower the saturation. Now watch what happens to our dots here our, on our graph. As I lower the saturation, as I said before, it brings it more towards the center. So if we have a black and white image, you're not going to see anything. It's all just going to be in the center dot here. So I'm going to bring these back out. Now, with a regular image here, I have a photograph here. This is what an image looks like on a vector scope. And you can see here, we have quite a bit of yellow, orangish kind of color here. And you're gonna see, uh, it's telling us that this is, this is kind of a strong color in this image. Now again, if I lower the saturation on this, we're gonna see it go away. Or if I move the saturation up, it's gonna expand it out a little bit. So to measure your hue and saturation, check out the vector scope. Our next scope is the histogram. So if we go to the wrench bar here down to presets, we can select histogram. If you've ever worked in Photoshop with a levels tool, you're familiar with what a histogram is. A histogram is basically reading the brightness and the tonal values of our image here. And we can actually see all of our uh, red, green, and blue levels as well. And it's measuring it vertically from zero, which is pure black, to 255, which is pure white. And it's, it even gives us a readout of the peaks of our red, green, and blue. You can see green's at 252, blue's at 253. Our red is kind of maxed out here. So horizontally, we're seeing the kind of the amount of pixels at that particular brightness level. So here we have quite a bit at this darkness level. So now, if you see, I'm gonna grab my exposure of this image, and if we bring if we bring the exposure down, you can see all the information is moving towards the black end here, because we're just pushing the exposure down. And if I move the exposure up, we're crushing all the information on the right here. So next up is the waveform monitor. And much like the histogram, the waveform monitor measures intensity. Also, from bottom to top, we have the dark levels, the black levels here at zero at the bottom, and then we have the brightness levels up here at the top. And on the right, you can see we have the measurements from zero to 255, with 255 being pure white, zero being pure black. And then over here to the left, we have the IRE scale, which goes from zero to 100. And once you go over 100 in certain broadcast platforms, it's considered illegal, and you need to, it'll either be too bright or too oversaturated, so you if you're working in the broadcast realms, you're probably familiar with engineers that are monitoring these levels. So this might be a little confusing to look at. It's hard to understand what's going on. I think the easiest way to understand this is to use a more simplified 
image to look at here. So I put together a text which is strictly black and white here and I put a gradient on here going from bright to dark just as our waveform monitor measures from bright to dark and since I applied such a smooth gradient we're able to see the actual word here. Now to show you what's going on here I can mess with the exposure a little bit and the contrast. As I move the exposure up you'll see all of the information starts to get pushed to the top. If I move the exposure down, all the information gets pushed down towards the black. And if you look here, our gradient's changing as we, as we do this. If I change the contrast here, lowering it pushes it kind of closer together. And raising the contrast spreads it more out, pushing more of the information to the top and the bottom. And also, since these are this is an RGB waveform, so we're able to, we're actually looking at all of the color channels here. So to show you, to kind of better illustrate this, I have applied an RGB curves effect, which is basically just shut off right now. But let me turn this on and watch what happens with our waveform here. I'm going to turn this effect on, and if we open up the effect, I adjusted the brightness levels and darkness levels, so it actually split those channels here. On our waveform so you can see how this works. The green levels are quite high and overexposed and the blue levels are kind of in the mid-range and the reds are down near the bottom. So I think this is a pretty good way to visualize how a waveform monitor works. So the parade scope is a lot like the waveform scope. Now let's now take note here remember what the waveform scope looks like. We measure again from darkness to lightness now if I go over to presets and select my parade RGB, here we are. We have the same layout here, 0 to 255, 0 to 100, but now we can kind of see our color channels are split out and they're in order like in a parade. I guess that's why they call that a parade because we have the red, green, and blue in order here. And now if I go back and change, you can still see that our our channels here or our levels of each color channel are different. So if I go down here and I turn off the RGB curves effect, here's what we originally had. So earlier with the waveform, we're essentially looking at these three channels kind of combined. So this parade splits them all out and we can work with each individual color channel, which is extremely useful. Using this in conjunction with the RGB curves tool, you can really control specific color channels for a variety of different purposes. Like if you're matching various color shots, this, these two, two tools together are very, very useful. Okay, so we've gone over how to read and understand the four main video scopes in the Lumetri Scopes panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. But I wanna show you quickly some of the options down here which can be pretty important. For this tutorial, I was working in an 8-bit uh, workspace here, but you have an option to switch to float and or HDR. You also have an option to clamp down on the signal to keep better control of it and to keep it within legal range. Now, if we go into our settings here, you see that I was quickly jumping between these scopes using the presets. So Premiere Pro has a variety of different presets here, and I can actually go to some of these presets which show uh, multiple scopes at the same time. So I can pull up several scopes all in the same time and have these customized. And you see some of these look a little different, like this one's green. Well, you have different, uh, different scopes have different flavors or different types. So the Parade has a variety of different things. You can specify if you want an RGB or a YUV. The waveform as well, you can take out the chroma or show just the chroma and luminance or all three color channels. And again, you can also select a color space down here, which these three are standard definition, high definition, and 4K. And last but not least, you can control the brightness. And this is just a display of, um, of the scopes. It doesn't change your actual images here. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality, royalty-free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.